Yeah, the fact that there is a measurable beginning to the universe, for me, uh, declares that scripture is correct when it says, in the beginning. Uh, God declared that there was a start to this world, that he created it, and there was a beginning. There was many other philosophies and suggestions about the origins of our universe and our world, and many of those were, you know, it's infinite, there's no beginning, there's no end, or it's cyclical. There is a beginning, we can measure it, that's exactly what scripture says. Life is a very complex uh, set of chemical reactions and probably more than we understand, but we understand how many chemicals it takes to have a living organism and we know that it's thousands of chemicals. All of these have to come together at the same time. So when we talk about the beginning of life we, uh, and we talk about the beginning of the universe and all of these things, everything has a beginning, but the beginning for life is a very complex set of chemicals that come together. And we, so we have a lot of evidence of what minimal set of chemical reactions need to take place for life to happen. So it looks like around three to 4,000 different chemicals, including water, different amino acids, proteins, of course the nucleic acids, RNA, DNA, and a whole host of enzymes that are all not just sitting in there, they all work in harmony with each other. So the beginning of life needs thousands of chemical components that are designed to work with each other. Therefore, we can have, life can exist, but only when you have all of these things coming together. It cannot exist when you have just a few chemicals, and then you sort of have a thing, something that's sort of alive, and then it can gather more of these chemicals and more of these chemicals and more until you get up to the thousands. You need to have all of them together at the same time. Water is, is the chemical that scientists go about the universe looking for because water is typically synonymous with life. And the scientific you know, vision of where uh, water came from you know, was to look up into the heavens and, wow, we see comets. There are these just big balls of ice going through, the, through our solar system. And so if they're ice, that's water. So that's where our water came from. I think in some ways, uh, recognizing that water was here all along does testify to scripture, and I think scientists know this. Uh, so I think two big pieces of evidence. Uh, one was these little zircon crystals. They are speculated to be very old, uh, based on uh, radiometric dating and, and perhaps some other positions in the geological col column. When they looked inside these crystals, they found water. And that should not have happened. If they were really old and there was no water on Earth, there should be no water in there. But the fact that there was a chemically present water. So that was one uh, bit of evidence. And the other is uh, now with our new technology, we're able to look at the chemical makeup of comets and asteroids. Sometimes we send uh, a space vehicle to there. We can take samples. Sometimes we can use light and spectroscopic information and we're able to uh, tell what kind of water is, is uh, located on these comets and it's called isotopes and uh, water is H2O everybody knows water is two hydrogens and an oxygen well there's different types of hydrogen and different types of oxygen and they're, they're called isotopes the water still behaves in the same way but when we look at the isotope ratio of the different types of hydrogen the different types of oxygen it's different than what we find uh, in the isotopes uh, here on Earth. So looking at these measurements, um, they're different. And so uh, it's possible that some water did come from comets, but uh, most of the evidence is pointing to water was probably here at the beginning.